Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint a bridge. I'm going to try to keep it simple uh, so that beginners can do it. Um, I've got my husband Mark with me. Hey there, everybody. He's got he's man in chat tonight for our live show. So if you've got questions while we're painting, you can ask and I will try to answer them. Let's get started. Okay, so here's our reference photo. I really liked it, um, and I like the colors in it. You could obviously change the colors if you want uh, to make it, you know, different. That's super simple to do. Um, I'm using a 9 by 12 inch canvas panel. This is the Belgian Linen Pro Series from Fredericks. They are a canvas sponsor, so thank you to them for providing our canvas tonight. We go over our brushes really quick. I'm going to use a large brush for the background, uh, number 12 bright. And then for some of the detail work on the bridge itself, I'm going to use a number 2 bright, a number 2 flat, possibly. And then I've got a number 3 8 inch angle and quarter inch angle in the velvet touch line. These ones are the Princeton 6100 series in the green handles. Um, let's see what else I got out here. The number two round or four, I'm sorry, number four round, number three eighths inch Willow's blender, quarter inch Willow's blender. I act like I've never seen these brushes before. <laughs> can't, can't read tonight. <laughs> three eighths inch Deerfoot stippler and a 10 aught. <laughs> fan brush. These are the Princeton Select. Thank you to Princeton for our brushes tonight. And we'll do better next time. I'm such a hard time reading <laughs> tonight. I think I'm going to use a number eight bright for some of the bridge uh, as well. Grab that one real quick there. All right, let's go over our paint colors really quick and we'll get started. I've got zinc white, unbleached titanium, titanium white, quinacridone magenta, cadmium red light, cadmium yellow medium, yellow oxide, burnt umber, Burnt Sienna and, I'm sorry, that one was uh, un <laughs> ultramarine blue. I was doing so well. Burnt Sienna and Burnt Umber. And uh, let's go over the drawing really quick. Do you want a sip of my wine real quick? I, I need some, I guess. I don't know what's going on tonight. <sighs> well, we were, we were talking about other stuff and we didn't realize how late we were. So I kind of like rushed <laughs> to start here. <laughs> All right, so uh, if you split this canvas in half, the easiest way of doing this or uh, split it up into thirds, um, the top third is going to be um, all trees and things, and then the bridge starts right up about there. The top part of the bridge is right about on the third. And then if you come down, uh, if you find the halfway mark and come up just a little bit, that's where the middle of our bridge is the end of it right there and then you're going to just draw a curved line from the top and you're going to come out so here's the end of our bridge and you can make it as wide as you want really we're going to make it fairly narrow here and uh, there's probably uh, two finger widths you know how we do the finger widths uh, four <laughs> four for the width and two for the middle part so that tells you like kind of come out about a finger width on either side there so this is four total and then two in the middle and two on either side. I think you got that. All right. So, so, so our top part of our bridge is going to be just past that, probably another fingers without. Um, you can kind of mark that. So do that there. That's kind of the end of the bridge there. And then um, – right here is kind of the top part right here so just kind of mark that so you kind of know where to start your curve going back down you're going to go up to that mark and make sure that they're equal on both sides so just make sure that you're going up the same height on both sides of your bridge here and here okay hopefully that makes sense i've got a lot of chalk here that's kind of getting in the way here um, so once you get kind of this figured out, then you're going to make marks down here. So you're going to make a mark here that's uh, about two fingers width from the either side um, of your bridge. And you're going to just curve this line all the way down to that mark. Like that. There and there. Then you're going to do the same up here. You're going to, looks like, well, what I did is I kind of figured out where the halfway mark is and came just down below that. And that's where the top of the bridge um, was. 
so just below. And just kind of try to match this up, these angles, and make sure that you're kind of, you know, I just kind of checked with my fingers, made sure that I was the same height on either side since we're centering this. Um, you know, if you were off center, then this side would be, um, this side would be higher than this side would be when you ended it. I hope that makes sense. So, all right. So that was it. That was pretty much all you, all we're going to have to do with the drawing. We're going to have like a railing that's going to come in. So that'll cut off part of this on the inside of here and here and um, right in here and right there. So we'll have three lines here. One, two, three, one, two, three. This one is a little bit wider than this one on top. And then there's going to be another railing kind of underneath it as well. So we'll, we'll draw all that in later, but that's all we need for right now. All right, let's get started here. I'm just going to wet down my brush and I'm going to pick up some of the white. Hope y'all are having a good day. Hope I'm if you're not. new to our channel, you will support our, uh, Give it a thumbs up and <laughs> subscribe. <laughs> oh my gosh. You'd think this is my first video. Yeah, I know. I don't know what's going yeah, on. Yeah, we with hope you that you subscribe to the channel. Yes. Right. Well, yeah. you interrupted me, so then I started thinking about others. Well, no, I just said no, I haven't had a good day. Well, I know. Then I, I you And you didn't ask me why. Well, I was trying to talk and then you interrupted me, so <laughs> how rude of me. I know. <laughs> I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm grabbing some a little tiny bit of. Um, okay, so I mixed white with my a little tiny bit of the cadmium yellow to start, and then I mixed up a little tiny bit of the burnt sienna and the quinacridone magenta. And I'm going to mix that in with my white color, and I'm going to go right up here to the bridge, and right in the middle there, I'm going to come up. On the edge of the bridge up. I'm going to blend it up and I don't want to go much higher than the top of the bridge here and then I'm just going to come off to the side here and just get off whatever is left on my brush here and here. Come up around the top. This holds a lot of paint. Okay so if you do that quick enough we can wipe our brush off here and come back in with this yellow, pick up a little bit more of it. Just a little bit brighter color. And I can come back over and blend over that color just a little bit. So you kind of have to do this quickly. I laid down that white first, but if this is dry before you get, uh, you know, get your, um, background on here what you could do is draw your bridge out on paper and then do the this background of your bridge without having to worry about going around the bridge because you can kind of work a little bit faster maybe if you're not having to work about you know worry about the angles of the bridge and all that so you know if you're if you're kind of slow ish painting you might just uh, do this in steps and do do your background First, come down and kind of just fill up this whole area with the orange color. And uh, then once you've got this background in, then you can come back and transfer on your design. And I have videos showing you how to transfer on with, with transfer paper. Probably the best one is the drawing paper, uh, feather drawing video of mine. All right, going to grab the cadmium yellow here. Just come in this corner here. Fill in the corner. And there we go. So we've got a kind of a nice glow back here in our darker area right here. Doesn't have to be perfect. We're just kind of trying to get it looking good enough right now. And we can always, uh, you know, fix it later if we make a mistake or whatever. Um, but we're going to let that set and dry while we work on our bridge. And then we'll come back to it and add more details here in a minute. That's kind of like advice for me, for husbands. What? Well, that I didn't have to be perfect and right. 
You just come back and work on it later. We'll keep on working on it until mm-hmm. it's right. <laughs> 30 years later. <laughs> so why did you, did you have a bad day, honey? Because I saw snowflakes. Oh, are you serious? Yes. Okay, let me go over these colors really quick and then we can talk about this. I've got uh, burnt sienna, burnt umber, and I have a little bit of yellow oxide. Okay, so I'm coming down here on the bottom of the bridge here and I'm going to do, I'm going to kind of reinforce my line here with the edge of my brush and then just kind of come across this way. Darker, it's going to get lighter as it comes up here, so I'm not going to go super far up with this dark layer at first. Where were you with it? You saw snowflakes in your car? Yes, driving to work this morning. What? I, somebody told me that we're going to have a bad winter this year, so. It's possible. It's cold out there. It's interesting. It's starting this early. It's pretty early to be this cold. Yeah, so, yeah. All right, I'm just going to kind of dry brush here. Just kind of get what get off what's on my brush there. Then I'm going to grab some of the yellow oxide, a little bit of water to moisturize my brush so it's starting to kind of get dry. Here I'm just going to go in here with the yellow oxide all the way up to the top and I do have dark brown still in my brush so that's fine. Just going to mix with it a little bit. We're going to go a little bit darker than we're going to end up with. So obviously this color is going to end up, you know, close to the sky color. But what we're going to do is put our highlight, our planks on, on here, on top of this color. We don't have to do that with the sky because the sky is the color it is. But on the this, we're going to have like dark areas on the sides and the planks are going to have, you know, little dark crevices in them. So we're going to go with the darker color first underneath and then we're going to put our lighter color on top to give it some depth. So Jillian has invited us to her place Ooh. in Australia <gasps> since it's about to be summer. So Nice. Don't say that, Jillian. We may end up <laughs> showing up at your place. <laughs> Don't say that unless you mean it. <laughs> Got some cadmium red light here. I'm just going to going over and you can kind of see how this is starting to get sticky so it's like picking up the color so I don't want to do anything more with it because um, otherwise it'll just keep lifting this color. So I'm going to take this with the red added and just start adding it on the sides here. Now these side slats are going to be vertical so all of these are going to go straight up and down to the parallel to the sides of our canvas. So if you keep that in mind, then you're never, never going to go wrong. These are going to go this way, and these ones are going to go vertical, right angles. And that way, it's not going to be a right angle here, though, obviously. Um, it's But it's going to be straight against the edge there. So all of these are going to be straight all the way in like that. Same thing on this side, straight. Well, not painting it straight there, but you get the idea. Straight, 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 and then these are going to be straight across this way. So that's how you get that illusion of depth. That's what the way it's supposed to look. All right, so I'm going to go in here and just fill in. And these are going to get... lighter as you go to the end as well. I'm using a little bit lighter because the light uh, color kind of hits a little bit farther down on this. So I will put in some darker color, but I'm going to start with a little bit lighter color so I don't get this in this blending too much. There is some of the really dark like back in here. We can use some of the burnt umber back here really close to the end and you can see I'm not really worried too much about my blending I'm just kind of trying to make sure that if I do have 
streaks that they're going in the right direction so that when I put my top coats on, I'm not going to have to fight any lines that are going in the wrong direction. So if I kind of put my brush strokes in in the direction that I want them to finish, then when we put these top coats on, we'll have this already underneath here kind of reinforcing the the shapes we're going for. Okay, so that's about as far as I can go with that. I'm gonna switch to a smaller brush. And I actually did all of that with the brush. Let me grab this one. This is my three eighths inch angle. Are we following this okay? Am I going too fast? I'm not really paying attention. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Good to know. <laughs> Good to know. All right, so starting with this yellow oxide here, I added a little bit of white to it. And just going to go like this. This and this merges right here, so I'm just going to make it all the same color right here. Where it comes down, the top merges with the sides. So I'm going to go like that. Let's do it right here. And this is going to be almost pure white, so but I'm putting this dark color in here just so that there'll be some contrast in case we do some shading, which we probably won't do much right there. But blending that in right there. Okay. Grabbing some of that white. And I'm going to go back in with the white and just kind of reinforce this being a lot lighter. And everything else, using the tip of my brush to draw that in. There we go. Now it looks like it's kind of glowing. I thought for those of you who have animals that that have passed, I've, somebody was suggesting that we do this as a rainbow bridge. You know, the, like when your animal passes, people say, I don't know, there's a poem about a rainbow bridge. So I thought that that might be kind of cool too if you wanted to personalize it and make it like that. You could do a little silhouette of your animal back in here to make the colors a little bit brighter. You do the same way you do it. You know, I'd probably use purple and then blue and green. Um, and then work up to yellows and then maybe have a little bit of red in the background or something like that. I don't know. Or maybe dark. Just your darkest colors back in here. And then working towards the lighter colors. Just an idea. Throwing it out there. So we lost our pet scooter this year, so we. I can't. I can't do it though. I was mm -hmm. crying when I was thinking about it today, so I'm not going to do it. <laughs> so what I guess a, a double rainbow bridge across mm -hmm. would be a little too much. A little bit too much, probably. Okay. <laughs> what does it mean? <laughs> that was one. Best videos ever. <laughs> Going in here with burnt umber, yep. doing a dark shadow right here. I'm kind of ending it right about where this starts to curve back down into the lighter area. I don't want it to go way down to there. We just just putting the the right colors in the right place. We're already kind of getting that feeling of the distance, feeling of depth. Kind of fun. Use a little bit of that darker color right in here. And here. You want this to curve down just a little bit. There's there's actually a little bit of that curve showing right here and here before this plank. So it's kind of coming up over. You're seeing the underside of this just a little bit, or the bottom of it, bottom edge of it. Go really dark. 
back right here. So here I'm going to try to kind of define it a little bit better. between those two when I put them on. So just reinforcing that really quick. This. And let's do yellow oxide with that burnt umber. Oh, oh, nope. Alexa, she was trying to talk to me there. I don't know what she thought I was saying. I think maybe when I said yellow oxide, it sounded like Alexa, maybe. Yellow Alexa. I don't know. Who knows? Forgot to turn her off. She she likes to talk to us during the show. That's our Amazon. She controls the lights, so that would be really bad. <laughs> If she decided to turn the lights off on us. <laughs> sure. No problem. Grabbing some of that unbleached titanium here. And I'm just going to go along the top edge right here. With this, I added some of that yellow oxide with burnt umber down below. And now we're going to kind of try to define this. And I don't really want to do actually too much right now because I want to... I'm not trying to finish it right now because what's going to happen is we're going to do this trees and I don't want to have to worry about this being, you know, messed up. So we're not going to finish this. We're just going to kind of put our first layers on here and get the whole canvas covered. That's all. And I just use my finger to kind of blend that in right there where it was not blending. This is... There we go. All right. <laughs> so one of the people said that they're... Her who shall not be named uh -huh. uh, units responded to your voice. Oh, really? Oh, that's funny. <laughs> At their house. Yep. Oh, no. <laughs> what did it say? Uh, it, it didn't say much. <laughs> <laughs> kind of surprised the person else. <laughs> so sorry. Well, and our new daughter-in-law's sister is named Alexa. <laughs> so oh, it was really it bad. Oh, Sorry. It was it was bad when she was visiting with us when she was staying here. Uh, she was she didn't know what mm. to do. She was going off all the time. Mm. Interesting. We could have fun with this. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I'm mixing a little bit of the cadmium red light and the magenta, and then I'm going to grab the burnt umber here. And I think I used something similar to this back here. I think I just used the magenta down here. It's looking a little bit pink. So I'm going to darken it up just a little bit. I'm going to grab that white. Add that. I may be sorry that I do this. We'll see happen how it goes. Wish me luck. I think that's too pink. Grab some Bartzina. Okay, so I've been missing some questions. and Okay. Fortunately, Chad's been doing a pretty good job. Okay. But we've got a, a question that asked if they varnish a painting. Right. And then they want to go back and add something. Yes. Is that possible? Yes. Yeah. Is it no legal? Problem. It's legal. <laughs> the art police won't come for them? Well, no. Okay. Not my, not, 
I won't. I, okay, all right, just make sure. I can't speak for anybody else. So you can paint over varnish. Going in with yellow. Back this way. Over the top of that. Blend that in. Sorry, I need to concentrate here for a second. I'll talk in a minute. Lightly blending out that edge. There we go. Okay, that's better. I just wanted a little bit darker so there was better contrast between what's happening on the sides here. Now I'm going to take this color, this darker color, and I'm going to add it here. Remember, we're going to make this a lot lighter on the top of our bridge here, so it's all about the contrast. We just want to make sure that where we're going to have it really light, we've got this really dark behind it. That way we'll have this really moody effect. Add me a red light, magenta. And burnt umber. There we go. that brush off. Grab some more of that cadmium red light. While that's wet, try to kind of come over that edge. Add a little bit of cadmium red light. If your color is lifting, that means that your paint underneath is either like too thicker than the paint on top. So if you put a thin paint on top of a thick paint, it will lift it off. The water will catch that paint and lift it. So just be careful of that. Um, don't add too much. I added a little bit too much water to my red there when I put it on. Grabbing some yellow. Added a little bit of the unbleached titanium to it. And lightly going over. So I put the color down above where I want it to go and then I just gently go back and forth and blend it over the edge of the new color that I wanted to add it to. And I kind of went too far over here, so I'm going to grab some of that darker color and come back this way with it. Just push that lighter color back. Okay. And I'm ending up, I wipe my brush off. I'm going to get a little bit of water, wipe it, wipe my brush clean. So I have a kind of a clean brush. I'm going to grab some more of that yellow color with some unbleached titanium. Come above it. A little bit of water here. Come right above it, lay the color down where I want it to go, and then lightly go back and forth over that edge. Now the color next to it, next to it still has to be wet, so that red, reddish orange color still has to be wet for this to work. Otherwise, it'll just lift the color. But it's gonna work in there. Add a little bit of white, a little bit more of the yellow. Come up here and I'm just now going to try to transition it into this area that I've already got going on. So I'm going to try to kind of cover over it. This area is all dark, dry now. So I'm going to have a color that's similar. Just kind of as similar as I can get to it. And grab a little bit more white. And it's fine if it's not perfect because this is kind of supposed to be kind of cloudy and moody, you know, so it doesn't have to be perfectly smooth. What we're trying to do is get rid of any obvious brush strokes, but it doesn't have to be like um, a perfectly smooth blend from one color to the next. Here we just kind of want it to look, look kind of cloudy, misty. I'm going to take some of that darker color and pull back this way because I kind of came down too far with my light color. There we go. I'm 
going to add just a little bit of this darker color that's in the corners right in here. Wipe that off. Blend it. Wipe it. It's going to act like a sponge, so it'll lift off the edge of that paint. You can also use your finger to kind of blend it out, but I don't want to use my finger because this color was wet up here, so the brush will be a little bit better in this case. Okay, there we go. Just trying to get it closer to this color here. Let's use this color before it dries. I'm going to put it over in this corner. I need to move this over because you're covering part of my drawing, my reference photo. There we go. So dark over here. Coming up a little bit higher than I think I need it. Picking up some of the yellow. Mix a little bit of that in with it. A little bit of unbleached titanium. And then I'm going to come up about right above it, right? Put that color down. Wipe my brush. And then pull down through. To blend those two. Together. titanium a little bit of that brighter yellow I definitely think that if you didn't have to worry about the bridge at all, it'd be a lot easier to do this part. So I would do the whole background first. Do all of this that you're, you know, that you're seeing me do here with the blending first and then, and then do the, draw on the bridge and do the bridge. It'll just be much easier to not have to worry about painting around this stuff. It's kind of making it a little bit more difficult than it has to be. Okay, so back and forth, back and forth there. And my center uh, circle got a little off center, so I'm going to grab some white and just kind of go in with the white. Quick question. Mm -hmm. Put you... the color right where I want it. And then I'm going to work the edges out. Just not touch the center again. Leave that nice and bright. Go ahead. What would I what? Were you uh, adding water to your brush, or was it dry the whole it's time? It's fairly dry. That, I, I do add water every now and then, just a, but just a little bit, not a whole lot for this kind of blending. Okay, so when you're blending the the yellow into the orange on the side, that was all dry. Yeah. I, well, I want or, it. It. I want the paint to stay thick. Because you kind of saw what happened over here when I added too much of the of the water to my brush. When I added the red color, the cadmium red light, it lifted off the color underneath. So in order for these colors to stay thick and blend, you know, stay dry long enough. Uh, and I'm using the heavy body acrylics. If you're using a different kind of acrylics, this probably is going to be a little bit more difficult. You may have to dry brush it completely. Um you know, use like a scrubber brush and, and dry brush it. Uh, and I show how to do that on the on the recent video that I did with, with the uh, flowers where we did all of this kind of blending in here with these kind of things like this. So you could do your background um, 
on a dry background and just dry brush some of this white stuff over the top of this color um, to do this differently. There's different ways of getting the same effect. You don't have to do it this way. But with heavy body acrylics, you want to keep them thick in order to do this kind of blending because it gives you more drying time. If you have them too thin, you have too much water on your brush, then they just um, they dry before you can actually do any blending. So a little bit of water, some of that darker color there. Again, I'm gonna wipe my brush off so it's not too dry, too wet. Pull up into that paint and blend back and forth. Grab some of that, this color again, pull back and forth lightly to blend that in. If I didn't have to worry about these bridges on either side, I could kind of just go all the way around with this color and not have to worry too much about the blending. This bridge. It'd be a little bit easier. This bridge doesn't look wide enough or strong enough to hold a tank. Might not be. I don't know, honey. No. Sorry. Mm. <laughs> Does not have past tank approval. I need to get a civil engineer in here or something. <laughs> Check it out. Okay. So I think we're good there. I think I'm going to call that good. I'm going to grab a number two flat now. And make sure that this is dry enough, it's somewhat dry. Let's go and work on the bridge some and then we'll come back to the sky because we gotta do the trees still. So I'm gonna grab the white, mix that with a little bit of the unbleached titanium. We're gonna grab some of the yellow, can we meal the light, keep it fairly light. And I'm gonna go, these planks, far away are going to be very thin so I'm just going to very lightly go back and forth and not go all the way to the edge here just kind of keep it in the middle sort of back and forth we got a question about the glowy keep part keep these straight if you need to use a ruler you can use a ruler to make sure that you're keeping these straight and just kind of go along like that. What? What about the ruler? The or glowy what? part. The glowy part, yes. If you did the glowy part first. Yes. And then the bridge, would that yes. be a good strategy? Yes, that's what I, yeah, that's what I was saying. Do the do all of that the background first and then do the bridge. Okay. Um it'd be easier. Yes. Okay, obviously I wasn't the only one listening. Okay. <laughs> But I'm not going to call them out since they invited us to their house in Australia. <laughs> yes, yes, definitely. I'd say really the only reason that I did not do it that way is that I did not want to have to draw this bridge on air because it took about 15 minutes just of, of you know, adjusting and back and forth. So I didn't want to worry about that on air it's just gonna be too much take too much time to make sure I get all the right angles right and stuff and so you're in the Thanksgiving spirit right back now or back and forth why what because you have a turkey in the bottom of your paint palette right now I am I do Okay, hold on, let me... That's okay. Stay focused. I'll entertain the people. Okay. See, so there we go. Going back and forth. And I'm not really trying to do each individual plank. I'm just kind of trying to get these streaks going in a horizontal direction. And that way, it'll kind of reasonable planks. So you don't have to do it all the way. Oh, I sure do have a turkey. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Uh, here, let's make it official. <laughs> okay, everybody try.
try to do your best turkey impression right now. <laughs> well, we can't hear them, so it's not as exciting. Shh, don't tell them we can't hear them. Okay. Their friends and family be looking at them kind of strange okay. right now. You're causing problems again, as, as always. Okay, got white hair, just going in with some lighter color. There you go. Leaving a little bit of that dark showing. I really like this. This is looking good. So they want to know, can they get a traceable for the turkey? <laughs> I don't think we've painted a turkey yet. Well, well the one off your palette. No, sorry. No traceable for that, okay. No. Nope. Making get it really it. hard for me to concentrate tonight, honey. I'm sorry. <laughs> I know you're having I'll, fun. But I'll leave you alone. <laughs> it's like when I really have to concentrate on this. It's the flowers or something like that. I just do it in my sleep, but I gotta start, I gotta pay attention on this one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so light, 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 <laughs> going light all the way up and around over there. So we're already kind of getting that good highlight. Some burnt sienna here. Mix it with my burnt umber. And some unbleached titanium. And I want to make a color that's just a little bit darker than this. So it needs to be fairly light. I want it to be similar to the colors that we've got over here in our dark area. I'm making sure that I don't do this too too dark too soon. So grab some white and I want to get a color that's similar to this color, this dark color here. I'm going to come right up here like this and add few little branches coming up out of that into our sun like that just a few and if it's not light enough just if you're seeing it too much then it should go on almost the same color as the background and that that way it'll It'll dry just a little bit darker than what it goes on. And we can kind of rub where it comes off there. But I want it almost the same color, or at least the same value as that background. So when I put it on, it will dry a little bit darker and it'll disappear into that background a little bit. Okay. That's good. Might go with a little bit more yellow. Just got a little bit of the gold color. There we go. That's a little bit better. zoomed in too much, honey. Thanks. Okay. I'm going to use this color all in through here. It's just got a little bit of the yellow oxide in it, and it's also got this kind of reddish color. It's almost like an
turning sort of orange. Use a little bit of cadmium red light here. Trying to get it closer to that color that's behind here. Use a little tiny bit of blue and that'll kind of neutralize it, make it look a little bit more gray than that'll be good. I'm just using that edge of my brush to draw these lines. If you want to, you could use a your round brush or whatever you have that you like using for making lines. I'm going to grab some of that. Red color from the bottom there and just kind of tap over. Okay. So I'm going to grab the Quinacridone Magenta, that Cadmium Red Light, some of that Burnt Umber. Maybe a little bit of the Yellow Oxide. too dark. So we're just going to add a little bit of the unbleached titanium to lighten it up. Alright, so we just need to get enough of these kind of background trees in that uh, before we do our trees on top. So I'm just going to give these a little few limbs here. These are just the trees that we're going to kind of see in the very, very background behind all the bigger trees.
Okay, so I'm going to grab the Deerfoot Stippler. I'm going to grab some of the burnt umber, a little bit of the burnt sienna. And I'm just going to tap in. Over here, there's kind of a hillside. So I'm just going to tap in a little bit of greenery right there, like a little bit of a Let's do the same thing over here. There's kind of a log over here on this side, but I think I'm just going to do it to match. Just be easier. Okay. And then there's some really light. I'm going to grab some of this lighter color here that we used in our trees, and I'm just going to put in a little bit of this in through here. Kind of using the edge of the brush here to tap in just light. You could use a fan brush if you have one instead for this, but just a little bit of foliage in the far distance. Doing okay, hon? You're being awfully quiet now. He's just, he's I'm being good. quiet now. No, just letting you go. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Let's do a little bit of highlighting on our bushes. Just a little bit. That's too much. I'm keep these fairly dark. Just giving it a little there we go. Okay, getting closer. Large trees are close to burnt umber. I'm going to add just a tiny bit of the blue just to gray them out just a little bit. And it's picking up a little bit of this color that we were using for the background too. But I'm going to go in and if you find the edge here, you're going to come in just a little bit it's going to be there's going to be one that's right at the top of that arc right here so one right here that kind of curves in and I'm just going to kind of wiggle my brush as I do this so it's going to go up like that you just want to make sure that it's not wider up top than it is down here you want it the base to be the widest part if there's a difference this one is pretty much the same all the way up there's some smaller branches here then there's another large tree right here and you don't want to go past right here because these ones at least right on this side. These ones are kind of right in here. Add a little bit of water to my brush just so that it goes on. And what we're going to do is we're going to put our mist over the top of this so you don't have to worry too much about it being perfect right now. It's going to look a little bit dark as we put this on, but we're going to mist over the top of it with other color. I'm going to 
and some of this highlight color and just a little bit of that on on the edges closest to that light source. So I'm going to go ahead and widen it up. There we go. To use this color back in here. It's a really big tree right here. a little bit lighter than this side right up in here there's some big trees right in here good and then let's do a couple more back in here there's another big one right here smaller Just using the edge of my brush here just to create thin lines. And like I said, if you feel more comfortable with a different brush, by all means, use whatever you're more comfortable using. All right, let's grab the burnt umber here. 
I'm going to do some vertical lines with this. Keeping this parallel to my edge. And I'm not trying to put these on straight. I'm doing them kind of like I did over here where I'm just going to kind of go up and down here, try to create some streaks of dark here. Use a ruler if you need to, because it'll be, it's easy to kind of start curving these um, you're looking at the curve here above you and below, you know, on the bridge itself. So it's easy to kind of start curving your lines to match the bridge. You don't want to do that. You want to keep them straight up and down here. Some yellow wax. I'm gonna use some of the brighter yellow too. Let me spray my palette down. Okay, just too much paint on my brush there, so just wiping that off. There we go. sides. Grab some of that unbleached titanium. Mix a little bit of this yellow in with that. And come on over the yellow with some light streaks. For my lightest part. Again, I'm not trying to do individual planks. I'm just trying to kind of keep it vertical. And that way your eye will kind of fill in the rest of the blanks for you. You don't have to do everything. I'm going to do a little bit of white. Just right in the middle here. And on either side, make sure it's nice and bright. Coming around. And now I can create the yellow that I'm going to use for the top of the rail. So I'm going to grab that white and some of the yellow and the yellow oxide. A little bit of the unbleached titanium. I just want to widen out pretty gradually, so I kind of 
start start very thin start really even with what's there and then press down just a little bit harder as I come out so that that widens out gets dark gets wider okay and there's another kind of not quite as light rim right there and right here just above the dark mark on our wood plank there and then I'm going to go with a little bit darker color so this is same white but I'm going to mix a little bit of this burnt sienna burnt umber mixture and I think I'm going to add a little bit of the blue to it Burnt umber, blue, a little bit of that white, so it'll cause create a kind of a gray color. We're going to use that here. And I'm not going to go all the way in with it. I'm just going to kind of darken up right here. Right there and right here. Let's use it right here too, right below this lighter color. the burnt umber and just kind of use that edge and go right above that little light line there right there right above that light line And by the time I get up here, you're really not going to be able to tell what's what. So we'll worry about it right back there. far up there so I'm just going to use some water and pull off some of that paint right there okay there we go let's use a little bit of this watered down paint over the top of the end of the boards here and here just shadow them where they get closest to us there's kind of a shadow right here and here there. I'm use a little bit more of this burnt umber. Let's use it to darken up right down here.
gonna kind of thin down here a little bit to make it go on easier. Should be just a little bit darker than what's already there. Clean up any messes in here. This is where you can add your other colors. So we've got these browns on here now and the yellows. So if you wanted to add purple or blue or whatever, you could do that at this point and kind of, you know, brighten it up. And you still leave the dark areas off to the side, but, you know, add just a little hint of color through the middle here. Just... There's a little bit of this color over here. There's some like a little bit of foliage over here. I'm seeing. Maybe do some over here too. If this is dry enough now, we'll see. This part down here is not, but the top is dry. We'll add our wispy smokiness. So I'm going to grab the Deerfoot Stipple. This is just a dry one that I already have. And I'm going to start in the center here. And pull out some rays of light. And this zinc white is transparent, so it won't be too bright. It will kind of go on and create these sun rays, but they won't overwhelm everything. You'll just be able to kind of barely see the, see the rays through the trees. And I'm just kind of starting here and just kind of pulling outward. I don't have a lot of paint on my brush. If you have too much paint on it, it will just kind of, you won't be able to see through it as well. I mean, it's still see through, but you, get, you know what I mean. You're just going to want to lay, start, start to slowly lay these layers on slowly. There we go. All right. Then I'm going to use a little bit of yellow. This cadmium yellow is not transparent, so just use the tiniest bit of it. I'm going to use it right down here under the bridge. Kind of right there where that dark area is. I'm going to kind of scrub over the sides of that bridge and out. Kind of foggy, misty feeling back in here. If any of these trees are too dark, you can kind of use this color to sort of create some foggy areas back here. See that? And then up close here, there's definitely some fog, so I'm gonna. that in. If it's too bright or too dark, you can kind of use your paper towel, kind of dab it off. You want to keep your brush dry, but you can have this paint be a little bit wet. If you, if you wet the paint down a little bit, you don't use your brush to do it, but you know what I'm saying, get a, get a little bit of water in your paint and then pick up a little bit of the paint that's got some moisture in it, it will 
make this a little bit easier. I'm trying to be careful because I don't want to pick up what's already down here. The color is pretty fresh under here. But just adding this smoky fog down low. This is totally optional. If you liked it the way it was before you did this, don't do it. You know, you can practice and see if you think you're going to like it or not. It's just supposed to be... for effect. Make it look more foggy. It's kind of turning pink down here so we can use a little bit more of that white, yellow to keep it from doing that. because that yellow is opaque, so. You wanna thin it down quite a bit, not not have a lot of on your on your brush. You, can, you can't even see the paint on my brush. It's that thin, that's how thin it needs to be to get this effect. Okay. What do you think, hon? Looking cool. Good. Good enough. I think I'm going to add a little bit more streakiness on our bridge right here. Just down that middle part. A little bit on the sides. If you want to do the detail with the bridge railing too, you can kind of just do a little bit darker parts. There's like some zigzags and things I didn't... I didn't decided to leave that part out but you can totally do that if you want to you can add some highlights to your trees if you want it's like a little bit lighter color and just kind of scrub that on I think we're good what do you think all right sign it looks okay oh yeah we need to do a little 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 uh splattery for the fireflies or whatever they are so good grab some white add water that's the key the most important part of this to get the splatters come off your brush well it should be kind of a milky consistency using the fan brush but you can use a toothbrush whatever So just before you did that, mm -hmm. I commented, said bedding time, splatters or no splatters. <laughs> A couple of people said no splatters. So losers. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I still have my mic on. I'm sorry. <laughs> Some of those had... Big woo! That one like exploded when I touched it. Okay, and then I can go back in with my little round brush in the draw out a few of them, make them look a little bit more like stars.
we go. Yeah, you gotta have the little sparkles. That's what makes it look kind of magical. See the little... I've been asked to zoom in, so I'm zooming magical in. Magical forest. Okay. Just so they can see some of the details. Oh, very nice. Wow, that's a big hand. Oh, sorry. some of these because they got like wide splatters like I didn't want super wide splatters oh and there's some leaves down here too so if you wanted to do those you could you could uh, mix some of the uh, yellow oxide a little bit of the ultramarine blue some of this burnt or uh, burnt umber and the unbleached titanium here. Just do some of the little leaves. You know, just little tiny wisps of... It's kind of hard to tell what they are, so I almost might leave them off. I don't know that they add anything to it, so... I'm just going to take mine off. But that's how you do it. All right, I'm gonna call it good. Let me sign it. Where did my signer thing go? Your signer thing? My pen. Other way, <laughs> aka pen. pen? Okay. <laughs> Ooh, super chat. <laughs> that was awesome. My signer thing. Okay, uh, we have. <laughs> <laughs> Glad to please. <laughs> Glad to amuse you. <laughs> and that's what an artist does while she's in her painting brain. <laughs> My signer thing. <laughs> I'll say that at work tomorrow. See what kind of looks I get. <laughs> but okay. <laughs> uh, so lots Love of it. chats. We had two Sweet. super chats. Awesome. The first one is from Dave, C5 Dave, oh. and says, thank you for the therapy session, or I mean painting session. <laughs> thank you, Dave. <laughs> thank you, Dave. That's <laughs> awesome. Thank you for your support. Yes. And then the other one was from Carol, and she says, thanks, Angela and Mark. So excited about this coming weekend's paintings. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The um, one on Saturday is really special because it's a, it's a um, nationally known uh, photographer who's somehow ma magically given us permission to use his. <laughs> I was dumb enough to ask him. What the what? <laughs> I was dumb enough to not know who he was <laughs> when I asked him to use his photograph. <laughs> <laughs> he's been in National Geographic and <laughs> he's like a major big deal <laughs> photographer. And I'm like, hey, I've got a YouTube channel. Can I use your photograph? <laughs> and he was nice enough to say yes. So we're going to use his world-renowned photograph of his uh, polar bear in the fireweed. So I'm super excited about it. It's going to be awesome. awesome. His name is Dennis Fast. So shout out to Dennis. Thank you so, so much for letting us use your photo. We're going to be doing that Saturday, so don't miss it. It's going to be awesome. I'm really looking forward to that one. So, all right, guys. Thanks for watching with us tonight. Time for dinner. So, uh, traceables? Yes, we'll have traceable for this uh, available on Patreon. So patreon.com slash Angela Fine Art. You can check that out. We've got all kinds of fun stuff. And actually this weekend is our Patreon bonus video weekend also. So we're going to be doing a really nice sunset, uh, winter sunset scene, scene on Sunday. So um, that will be this weekend too. Got a lot, of, a lot of going on this weekend. So, And that's uh, for the $5 level. They get the access to the bonus video. So be sure to give it a thumbs up. Share this video if you liked it uh, with your friends. And uh, be sure to share it with me on social media if you do it. I've got Facebook and Facebook groups where you can share it and Instagram and all kinds of other good stuff. So 
love to see it if you try this. All right. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye.